Stories with a Voice Like This presents April Showers, written by Mabel Dreamer and illustrated by George Lambert. One morning in April, Ava set out to pay her grandmama a visit. She wanted to have as much time with her grandmama as she could, and so she hurried along at her fastest pace, singing gaily, as she went in order to make the journey seem as short as she knew how. In her basket, she was taking some sticks of rhubarb and a nice gooseberry tart, for her grandmama was always very fond of these things. Ava had not gone very far before the clouds began to drift over the sky. They quickly gathered together, and then pat, pat, patter came the rain onto the leaves and flowers around her. At first she did not know what to do, and was wondering whether it would be better for her to go back home, but she soon made up her mind to wait under a tree. The raindrops dimpled the little pools of water, the buttercups and daisies half closed their eyes and hid themselves underneath their umbrellas, the birds chirped and twittered among the branches, the fishes darted about the streaks of silver in the stream, and the lambs and sheeps collected under the spreading trees and joyously bleated in expectation of nice mouthfuls of sweet green grass as soon as the shower was over. Presently a ray of sunshine shot through the clouds, and then a lovely rainbow arched across the sky, touching the distant hills with one arm and rising from the shining trees with the other. Then the rain ceased, and everything looked bright and fresh. The flowers opened their eyes and gazed upon the welcome sun, and the leaves on the trees shook themselves dry and rustled sweetly as they did so. The ground drank in the little pools, the lambs and sheep returned into the open, and Ava left her shelter and hastened on her road. She soon met a busy bee gathering honey from the wildflowers, and softly humming as he flew from one cup to the other, each made so much sweeter by the rain. Then near the stile she saw a company of little ants crawling earnestly about with tiny bits of food in their mouths, laying up stores for the days to come. And close by some snails putting out first one horn and then the other, and then crawling off to enjoy the warmth and the sunshine. Ava looked at all these as she tripped along, stepping aside so she should not hurt them. Then she went across a field where a company of rooks were holding a parliament, one of whom was delivering a long speech, probably about the weather and the earliest date when the currants and cherries would be eatable. At least Ava thought so. In the next meadow was a boy and a dog looking after a few cows, some of which were lying down, some chewing the grass, and some drinking water from the stream which ran along on one side. Ava was a timid girl. When she saw the cows, she was a long time making up her mind to venture through the gate. But at last she did so, and as she hurried by, the cows, like all other cows, took no more notice of her than to lift up their great heads and look at her vacantly with their large, dreamy eyes. And when they went on with their dinner as before, Ava thought to herself how silly she had been to stop about the gate and feel afraid of such harmless creatures. When she reached her grandmama's home, she unpacked her basket and then went into the garden to see the fernery, which was now full of tiny fronds. Then she looked all around the garden, and in a corner found a nice piece of groundsel for the goldfish, who thanked her for it with a sweet song as she went into the house. Then she had tea with her grandmama, and then went away home through the meadow again, passing close to the cows, quite bravely. Finis.